Hello friends, this video on data handling part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed about frequency distribution tables, we will now try to make graphs based on these tables. So it is going to be a combination of the graphs and grouped frequency distribution. So in this section, what we will learn is how can we make graphs looking at the group frequency distribution table. So if we are given this table, like how it is given here. So from this table, how can we draw a graph like this? So that is what we are going to connect in this section. So the first thing that we will discuss is how do we draw bar graphs? Now we have already discussed the different types of graphs like the pie charts, bar graphs, line graphs, etc. So first we will start with bar graphs. So how do we draw bar graphs? So what is given on the screen? The, all that you see on the screen is a grouped frequency distribution table because you have groups here in the first column. It is just that the tally marks column has been removed for now. So you have your class intervals or the groups and their respective frequency. So how would you draw a bar graph? Now whenever you look at a bar graph, it looks somewhat like this. So bar graphs, they consist of bars which are nothing but rectangular pieces. Now when you look at any of the bars, so each of these rectangular pieces is called a bar. Now the width and the height of the bar tells us a lot of information about this grouped frequency distribution table. That's because the width of the bar graph, this is the width of the bar graph and this width of the bar graph tells us the size of the class interval. So in this case, what is the size of the class interval? So here, if you find out the size of the class interval, it would be 40 minus 20, which is equal to 20. Now, when you look at these graphs, the width of these graphs would be 20. So width of each of these graphs would be 20. So the width of the bars tell us the size of the class interval. Now, what about the height? Now, when you look at the height of each of the bars, the height tells us the frequency. For example, the last bar, the last bar is for the class interval 80 to 100. So for 80 to 100, what is the frequency? Frequency is 5. So the height of the bar is till 5. So the height of this bar tells us the frequency which is 5. So basically the concept is that once you have this table, the grouped frequency distribution table, first of all look at the class intervals, plot the class intervals on the x-axis and then make sure that whenever you draw a bar, the width of the bar should be equal to the size of the class interval, like how we have drawn it here. So when you draw the first bar, the first bar is for class interval 20 to 40. So that is why you have chosen these two points, 20 and 40, so that the width remains 20. And then how much would be the height? The height is determined by the frequency. So the height is at 1. So basically you draw these lines and then you draw a bar because a bar is nothing but a rectangle. So the length and breadth of the rectangle are determined by the size of the class interval and the frequency respectively. So now once you know the height of the bar and the width of the bar, it is very easy to draw a bar and you draw one bar for each of the data, each of the class interval, you draw one bar. So this is how you end up having a bar graph. Now another interesting thing is like when you look at this uh, table, you see that it starts from 20. So it starts from 20 to 40, then 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 80 to 100. Now what happens after 100, we do not know. And what happens before 20, that also we do not know, right? Now whenever we have a, a table where the class interval doesn't start from 0, now it might start from 20, it might start from 40, it might even start from 100. Now in this case, it was 20. So that is why what we have done is we have kept 10, 10 here, but we started it from 20. Now let's say that if you have a, a table where it starts from 
maybe 500. So in that case, do you think that you will leave this much of area of the graph paper blank and then start from 500? No, you will not do like that. In that case, what you will do is we use a jagged line to show that there is no data which is present for that range. For example, here till 20. We do not know. There is no data that is given for 0 to 20. So what we do? We make use of a jagged line, a curved line like this. So when you have a curved line like this, the line here is not straight, which says that we have absolutely no idea about the data from 0 to 20 because that is not given in the problem. So in a similar way, even if you have a class interval like 500 to 520, then 520 to 540, 540 to 560 and so on. In that case also, you just give a jagged line and then you start from 500. So that will just tell that there, there is no data available for the range 0 to 500. So that is another important thing. So I think keeping these three points in mind, you will be able to draw a bar graph given a grouped frequency distribution table. So the first point is that the width. So the first point is width of the bar is equal to the size of the class interval. Second point is that the height of the bar is equal to the frequency of each class interval and the third point is that use a jagged line in order to show that portion from zero for which there is no data available. Like in this case 0 to 20 is that area for which there is no data available so it has been marked with a jagged line. Now another interesting term that has been used for these rectangular bars of the bar graphs are histograms. So what are histograms? These are nothing but the rectangular bars of the bar graph. So when we draw the bar graph, we, do, we were drawing the rectangular bars. So those rectangular bars are called histograms. Now the next question is where exactly do we use histograms? I mean, is it that we can use histograms everywhere? Can we draw bar graphs everywhere for any kind of data? Not really. Histograms are used to represent grouped frequency distribution. Now you might say that why only grouped frequency distribution? So even if I have a normal frequency distribution table, why can't I draw a histogram? Now let us try to see. So let's say, let's take an example and we say that uh, we have favorite fruits of the number of students in the class and this is how the table looks like so apple is being liked by five orange by three grapes by three and mango by one so this is our frequency distribution now do you think that we can make a histogram for this data we have the frequency but do you think that a histogram can be made what is a histogram? Histogram is made up of rectangular bars and in order to draw the rectangular bar, what do you need? You should know the width and the height of the rectangular piece. Now height is nothing but the frequency. So the frequency is given here. So height is fine. But what about the width? For the width, we need to know the size of class interval and the concept of class interval comes into picture only in case of groups. So that means for this frequency distribution table, we do not have a width of the bars. Now since we do not have a width, so histograms are not possible. So we cannot draw bars without any width, right? Therefore, we cannot make histograms in this case. Now you might say that, but still I want to represent this data graphically. So how do I do? So you might have other options. Maybe you can make use of a line graph. We have discussed about line graphs before, right? So let's see that how we will draw a line graph here. So line graph could be something like this. Let's say this point represents apple, this represents orange, grapes and mango. Now and here you have one, two, three and so on. So apple being liked by 5, orange is being liked by 3, grapes is also being liked by 3, mango is being liked by 1. 
so when you join these points you get a line graph so this is a graph that you can draw for this type of a frequency distribution but the moment you talk about a grouped frequency distribution something of the sort where you have groups where you have class intervals in this case you have the class size and you also have the frequency therefore you can draw a bar graph or a histogram like this and that is why we say that histograms can be used only to represent grouped frequency distribution thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you